What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and we got a little bit different video than normal today. We're gonna talk about games, but we're gonna specifically talk about games that kind of check a couple of boxes here. They're cheap, and they're easy to run. You can run them on pretty much a potato, and they have, of course, the third most important box, they're fun. The Elite XG270 QG from ViewSonic breaks the traditional ugly appearance of gaming monitors by providing an ultra clean design while still delivering gamers the features that they want most. Features like a one millisecond response time, IPS 165 hertz overclock display, black brushed aluminum stand with tilt and swivel, mouse and keyboard cable anchors, and customizable subtle lighting. To learn more about the XG270 GQ from ViewSonic and to see current pricing, click the link in the description below. So it is, of course, the Steam Summer Sale happening right now. These prices that we'll be mentioning here are uh, affected by Steam Summer Sale. So you're gonna want to act quickly if any of these titles uh, kind of pique any of your interest. A lot of these titles are not just mind-numbing games, they're actually brain games, and they're things that I would pretty much all of them except for maybe one or two, I'd actually recommend maybe even playing with your kids because they can stimulate and make you have those creative juices start oozing out of your ears or whatever. Um, the other important thing is this is not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by any of these devs or Steam or any of that. These are just titles that we put together because many of you who've put together your computers are sitting there going, I got nothing to play on it, or you've got a complete system missing a graphics card. And the idea here is that if you were to go out and find yourself a three or four generation old used card, they could pretty much play all of these titles. And then when cards become available again, you put in your high-end card and then you can start playing the latest AAA titles at maximum RTX ray tracing settings and stuff. So the idea here again, if you're also running an old hardware, old laptop, or maybe even integrated graphics on something like an AMD APU or God forbid an Intel iGPU, then you could actually potentially play these titles as well. All right, so first up for $4.99 is American Truck Simulator, made by the same studio that brought you Euro Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2. This is a title that's not new, it's been around since like 2016. It's one that people have told me I should try and I never even considered it because I was like, like I wanna sit there and go all slow in an 18 wheeler dealing with all the idiot drivers. And you know what? That actually is what made it fun. The AI in this is kind of, well, I would say they're stupid, but then considering the fact that I did drive a truck, I can tell you right now, they're pretty accurate with the way they cut you off and they're impatient and all that sort of stuff but it is an, an RPG. You have to build your career. You have to build up your truck to be able to take you know, heavier equipment or heavier loads, which will make you more money and longer haul and manage your fatigue and manage your fuel. Don't get tickets, you know, upgrade your vehicle, make repairs, all that stuff. And I'm the kind of guy that's like, okay, I wanna make it from A to B without getting a single moving violation, which has been difficult so far because usually I'm just like, it's only 45 more minutes. I can make it, I don't need to sleep. And the guys all fall asleep behind the wheel, which unfortunately, if you're a truck driver and you do that, stop it. Anyway, that's a fun title, $4.99 for the starter, or it's a little over eight bucks for the, uh, the bundle. So check that one out. In terms of the hardware, dual core, CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, that's a potato. Four gigs of RAM, a GTS 450 or an Intel HD 4000. There's no recommendation for AMD, but obviously a GTS 450 goes back quite a ways. It's recommended a quad core CPU or GTX 760. So there you go. Not hard, hard, not difficult hardware to find these days. The next one here, it's kind of embarrassing, but I've already completed this title. It's an early access title. However, if you look at the reviews, they're overwhelmingly positive. Power Wash Simulator comes in at $16.99. The second most expensive title on this list. So it's just what it sounds like. You literally take a power washer, technically a pressure washer, there's no heat. Power wash requires heat. Pressure wash is just air jetted water. So you take your pressure washer and you accept jobs and you clean stuff, cars, bikes, vans, houses, skate parks. And you know what? I spent something like 22 hours on that game last week. Last week. In one sitting. No, I got up and went to the bathroom. Anyway, so just like any other RPG, you, you build up your equipment, get better power washers, better nozzles, soap, foam cannons, extensions, scaffolding. It's, uh, it's kind of silly how much time you can spend on that, but if you've ever watched a power washing video and you find it satisfying to watch something go from filthy to clean, that's definitely gonna be a title you wanna check out. That is recommended needing an i5-760 or an AMD Phenom 2, or a GTX 760 or an R7-260X GPU. So as you can see, 10-year-old title, or 10-year-old hardware running a, uh, 
an early access title, which by the way, I can't wait for them to uh, add more jobs. If you think that it's not gonna be you know, enough gameplay time because it's early access, they're constantly rolling out updates and giving you more jobs and stuff. This next one here is Besiege. It's $8.99 on the Steam sale. Requires a 2.2 gigahertz dual core processor, 512 me megabytes of dedicated VRAM. So yeah, as you, as you can see, that's a pretty low requirement. But Siege is kind of crazy though. It's more like, think of it, think of it as like a um, catapult simulator in a way. So basically you have different objectives and you move through a track and the worlds that you unlock and you have to besiege something, whether it's shoot down these flying things or bust through this wall or kill all these people, which sounds terrible, but they're just, they're little cartoony guys. You'll feel fine about that. Um, but you, it's a physics based game which really makes things kind of funny because you'll build it and then you go to test it and you're like, oh yeah, this should work. And you push a button and then suddenly things explode and don't work the way you thought they were, they would. Uh, makes it a lot of fun. That's a good one for your for a kid as well, in my opinion, because it starts to teach him some basic engineering and the way cantilevers work and weighting systems and balance and drive lines. Crazy addictive too, by the way. And there's lots and lots of gameplay hours to be spent there because there's no right or wrong way to do something. And sometimes the most unorthodox way to complete a mission, well, that's how I do it. Some of the stuff I came up with are yeah, I mean, you see the overlays here. Some crazy things I came up with and it gets even crazier. This next one here comes courtesy of Phil. It's Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, coming in at $9.99. Only requires an i5-2400 or an FX-6300 AMD CPU, GTX 670 or an R9-270. It recommends an i7-4770 or a Ryzen 5 1600, GTX 970 or R9 290X as recommended. That's probably gonna be the highest recommendation so far in terms of hardware but it's essentially a lot like the siege. Only the difference is you're kind of placing your troops and your equipment where you want them on a map. It just looks like a basic like square layout kind of a deal. And then AI takes all that information and then just recreates a battle based on the stuff you place down. It's also a multiplayer game, so you can play it with your friends where your, your friends have no idea what the battle layout's gonna be. So it's uh, it just basically turns into a lot of laughter, I guess, because there could be flying mammoths across the sky because you start shooting it with balloon arrows and now you see a mammoth flying and it's just crazy stuff. But for $9.99, I mean, how could you go wrong with a title that is gonna allow you to play with your friends and realize that seems like a good drinking game, honestly, if you ask me. Um, yeah. You know, just have a few cocktails and just see what the AI comes up with based on your suggestions. So the next one here is uh, $19.99. It's uh, basically tied for first place on the most expensive title. There's two $20 titles on here. It's BeamNG Drive. Basically what this is, it's a driving simulator, but realistically it's more of a soft body physics generator or simulator, if you will. The idea here is just to take vehicles and crash them. But what you'll notice is unlike any other title where the crash model or the crash damage is predetermined and if you impact a certain spot, then it just sort of crumples in in like the same way every time. This is a soft body physics generator. So basically it's going to continue to add damage in the places that the force is applied. So if you were to do a small rollover, you'd notice crumpling metal. If you hit it again, it crumples even harder. It just keeps going and going and going because it actually calculates all that damage. Now, something like that might sound like it needs a lot of computer power, a lot of processing power, specifically with your CPU because of that model. However, the minimum requirement on this again is an AMD FX6300, so we're talking a 10-year-old CPU now, or an Intel i3-6300. So you can see all the way back to Intel 6th gen, we're currently on 11th gen if you forgot. HD 7750 or a GTX 550 Ti graphics. So as you can see, that's old and probably not hard to go out and buy one of those graphics cards. Believe it or not, there's plenty of them on eBay, like these, this older stuff. So it's not hard to go out and find three or four generation, four or five generation old hardware at this point. It recommends a Ryzen 7 1700 or a Core i7 6700 or an R9 uh, 290 AMD graphics card or a GTX 970. So again, the 970 is tied for first place on the highest recommended piece of hardware. However, you can go buy 970 for about $120 right now on eBay, Craigslist, wherever. So it can get you up and running playing a title. And as you can see, based on the other hardware we've talked about already, allowing you to play all the titles we've already mentioned and exceed the recommended um, hardware. So just like if you were one of those people that see it satisfying to watch power washing videos, if you like to watch crash test videos where they do the super slow-mo crashing of a crash test dummy and stuff, this is Crash Test Simulator, basically. This next title is not one I recommend for your kids. It's LA Noir. 
Basically, it's a whodunit. You're a beat cop that becomes a detective because you solve a case. It's $5.99. It's 10 years old on the title. However, it's a thinking game. You have to go in and interrogate people and find clues and go and basically solve mysteries and murders and crime as a 1930s, I mean, so already the era, in my opinion, it's like the gangster era, which makes it really kind of intriguing. I like that particular era. I think the 30s and 40s would have been an interesting time to be alive. But it comes in at $5.99. The graphics aren't great. Remember, they're 10 years old. Apparently, though, the speaking is all mocap or motion capture. The facial features and the expressions and stuff are very realistic because as a detective, that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. Are they lying? Are you gonna look at their body language, their facial features, the way they talk, all of those stuff, all that stuff is clues. So they use real motion capture to accurately model when someone's nervous or upset or mad or, or, or lying or being deceitful, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. But again, $5.99 only requires a dual core, two quad core CPU. So that's open interpreted. Uh, an 8600 GT or a GTX 580. On the AMD side, H, or excuse me, Radeon, because this is before AMD, a Radeon HD 3000 or a 6850. So not hard to run. You can run it on a potato today. Look at it as like, it's a, it's a, it's a detective novel that you're playing. It's the best way to put it. This next one's actually not that old of a title. I guess it, it kind of is, but I don't really consider it old because it's still a title people play and have a lot of fun with, especially as a co-op game. We're talking about Portal 2. It's $1.49 for the bundle. It requires a Pentium 4 or higher, or an AMD 64X2. Yeah, their, their, their first dual core. Two gigabytes of RAM, and the video card must have, are you ready for this? I don't know how many of you are gonna have this now. 120 megabytes or more. Basically, Portal is just that. It is a, uh, you have a Portal gun, I'm sure you guys have all seen it by now, and you can shoot basically two portals that, are, that connect to each other. So you go through a wall and you come out over here, like, you know, or you shoot a portal under your friend and have them fall through. But the idea is that you work in co-op to solve puzzles, to get from a starting point to a destination. And you're kind of this experiment for like the computer system that's running the portal program. And it messes with you and it says jokes and it makes fun of you. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. Phil and I played it at DreamHack uh, at the beginning of 2020. Yeah, we actually made it to a LAN party in 2020 before everything shut down. And it was a title that we were live streaming and a lot of people were enjoying watching, especially considering I had never played it before. So people were watch, enjoying watching me discover it for the first time. It, it really is like watching someone learn how to walk, honestly, on a title like that. But once you start to get it, it starts to make sense. You can play it on a potato, get two potatoes and play it with your friend. All right, so this last one here, uh, it's kind of interesting because technically it was, a, it was a console title for a long time until it was released on PC not all that long ago. And it's also tied for first place in the most expensive at $19.99 for the uh, entire bundle. And we're talking about, of course, the Halo Master Chief Collection. Now that 20 bucks gets you every Halo up to Halo 4. Doesn't include Halo 5, obviously, because that's our newest title. But it runs on pretty much any low-end hardware. Intel i3-550, AMD Phenom 2 960T, uh, GTS 450 or an HD, HD 6850. Now that's for Halo 1 and 2, and that's for the OG graphics. There is a remastered version of it, which if you upgrade your hardware later on or you finally get your GPU you've been waiting on, you can flip on the remastered collection uh, on the titles that support it, and then you'll get all the beautiful eye candy where it's basically now you take an old title and it looks brand new. But the thing about Halo, it still has a diehard cult following. I can't tell you how many hours I spent playing on comms with friends on Xbox 360, and just going for 50, man. You know, I made it to level 49. I never made it to 50. I wasn't good enough for that. And then I can, I would get like maybe one or two wins away from getting that, you know, that, that just coveted 50 rank, and then I would fall back again. That's okay, it's besides the point. I, I was never very good at aiming with a controller, but you don't have to be now, because you can play it on computer and a potato computer at that. But it's about the story. If you've never played Halo or understand the, the following behind Master Chief, it's not that often these days I feel like developers can capture a, a society or a group of gamers like Halo did because I feel like a lot of titles just don't go for the story as much as they go for the eye candy and the gameplay nowadays and then they just have weak storylines. 
Halo is all about the strong storyline, and then the, the, the graphics and all that sort of stuff is secondary. And obviously, as you go through the titles to the newer, towards the newer ones, the graphics in, improve because the technology has improved over the last 20 years or whatever that Halo's been around, making it just that much prettier. But again, right now, 20 bucks for the entire Master Chief collection up to Halo 4. It's going to get you uh, a lot of gameplay for that amount of time. But if you were to take all of these titles and add them up, it basically costs a few bucks more than a single AAA title today. Like if you were to take the price of Cyberpunk, you could get all of these titles. And if you wanted to get anything other than the basic edition of any game, then this would cost less because obviously you talk about like, it's what, $59.99 or something like that for Cyberpunk or whatever it launched at. And if you want the special edition, it's $100 now because you get some digital shinies and a new shirt in the game. You know, the way developers like to just kind of screw you now when it comes to microtransactions and DLCs, all of these titles will play on old hardware and barely add up to the cost of a single standard edition AAA title that you probably can't run anyway if you don't have the latest hardware. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. What are your go-to cheap, easy to run, fun to play games that you would recommend right now on the Steam Summer Sale. Comment down below with what your favorite games are. What are the ones that you have literally melted your life away because you can't put it down and it's just the replay value is there and the fun factor is through the roof and it costs less than a Starbucks. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see your comments down below because I think I'm looking for new titles to play too. But I got some trucking to do. Yep, I gotta load up my country twang and I gotta get from Yuma back to San Francisco. Leroy! <laughs> the neighbors are probably like, what's up? <laughs>